Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to set up a melee combat system where we can easily add multiple different weapons which deal a different amount of damage. So I have this one sword and it does 10 damage to the enemy so I need to hit him with it twice before it kills him and then I have set up this other sword and it does 15 damage so it instantly kills the enemy. The first thing we're going to do is import the animation tool when our character is attacking with his sword and the animations when he gets hit. So to do that, just import these animations into Unreal. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download them and just select the skeleton, e for mannequin and import all and we will have the animations for our character. The next thing we're going to do is create a new folder and I'll just call this sword. So this is going to be where I store the meshes for my various weapons. So I have uh, two swords so I'm just going to import them in and just import all. So once you've imported your weapons and animations, we're going to set it up so that our sword's in the correct position when our character's using it and attacking it. So if we head over to one of the animations and then just go to Skeleton, we want to select his right hand. So I'm going to make my character use his right hand to swing the sword. And then we're just going to right click, look for Add Socket, and I'll call this socket my Sword Socket. And here will be where his sword is. And then we want to right click on it and add preview asset and I'm just going to add sword and then you just want to position this in the correct position. The animation we'll be using for this is the sword slash attack so we can click preview animation and look for sword sword attack and I can see it's a bit off so you just want to adjust it so it's in the correct position when he's doing the animation. So that's a bit better, I've just rotated my sword so it's in a better position. So this is how it looks when my character holds his sword and attacks with it. So now that we've set that up, we can just close this and set up our sword blueprint. So I'm just going to go to my third person and to the blueprint folder and I'm going to right, whoops, right click, blueprint class and create an actor and I'll call this my base um, sword weapon. Sword weapon. And inside here we are going to add component static mesh. We'll just leave this blank and this will be our sword. And we also add a box collision. So this will be the collision around our sword. So I'll just call this sword collision. And then we want to create a new variable and I'll just call this sword damage. So this will be the amount of damage that my sword does. We'll just change this to a float and click compile and save. So this is going to be what all our swords reference and this will allow us to make multiple swords so this is why i've set it up this way and we just want to right click on this and create blue child blueprint class and i'll call this my sword one and if we go inside here we can add component sorry no we can just select this sword and then we're going to select the first sword that i set up so sword so we can see and then we want to set the box collision to be around this sword so just set it up So this will be the collision around our sword. Um, that's the thing I forgot to do in the base weapon, so if we head back to it, we want it so that when this overlaps with the player, it will cause him to be damaged. So to do that, we can scroll down here, and then go on component begin overlap. <clears throat> Whatever we hit, we're going to apply some damage to it, so look for apply damage. The amount of damage we do will be the sword damage, which is stored in this variable. And then to prevent it from like keep on damaging him, if like we overlap another actor with our sword we're just going to have a do once here and then we'll have a delay so it won't continuously spam the and keep damaging the actor if we hit him with the sword so we're going to have this do once and then have a delay so we can just hit an actor with our sword and then we'll have another 0.5 seconds and then we can hit another actor with our sword again and then so the player can't hit himself with his own sword we need to create a branch and see that this other actor is not equal to the owner of the sword and the owner of our sword will be our third person character we've just not set that up yet and we'll just plug this in and this will just prevent us from hitting ourselves with our own sword if we 
go to the sword collision box, we want to scroll down and make sure that it's an overlap all dynamic. I'm going to create two nice custom events. So this first one is um, sword active. Uh, when the sword is active, we're going to get this and then set collision profile by name and then we want to select it to overlap all so that will overlap and can overlap all actors and then we'll create another custom event and we'll call this sword deactive we'll drag in our sword collision and set it to uh, set collision enabled and set it so that it has no collision so it can't overlap anything and we can just compile this and then in our sword we want it so that our sword doesn't has no collision so it doesn't block with our player and in our sword collision at the start we want it so that it has no collision as well so it only has collision when we hit it and swing it and all these properties will now be in this sword one so let's also set the damage for this sword so I'm going to set it so this sword does 10 damage every every time we hit it. <laughs> and now we're going to set this all up in the third person character. So to do that, we're going to add component, look for child actor. We can place this child actor in the mesh. And then the child actor class, we can select sword 1. And it'll be our sword. And then until it's attached to the correct socket, we're going to select the sword socket. And then you just want to click this and that if it's not in the right position. And now our sword will be in the roughly correct position. And now we get play. We can see we can run around with our sword. So now we're going to set up so we can attack and damage other actors with this sword. Hmm. So to do that, we head over to the event graph and in some free space. I'm going to make it when I press the right mouse button. We will play an um, montage. So let's compile. We've not set up the animation montages, so we're going to do that now. So if we head over to the animations and go to the standing, this one and this one, just right click on them all, create and create animation montages. So that they work, we need to go to the third person animation blueprint and head over here and then just go default slot. And then this will make it so we can play animation montages. Then if we head to the third person character, we want to select the slash animation so now if we click play we can slash and do a slash attack so now i'm going to set it up so that when we do it we can damage stuff so we're just going to close this go to the blueprints we look for blueprint class and under all classes we want to look for anim notif state just select this and call this damage state we open this up we want to go to functions override and on the beginning what we want to do is we want to reference our sword and make it so we turn its collision on so to do that first we're going to get the owner of the mesh and then from here we can get the third person character sorry class to the third person character and from here we can reference the child actor so I will get the child actor. Good child actor. And from here in the child actor, we can get the child actor, which is inside the actor. So <clears throat> we're referencing this and then we're referencing the sword inside here. And then from here, we can cast to the base sword weapon. And then from here, we can call the sword active event that we made so I'll just call sword active and I'll turn our sword on I'll just move this here and plug this through here so now I'll turn on our sword and then we're going to do I'll notify end and just copy all of this plug this in here but this time we will do sword deactive 
and plug it in here. So next, if we head over to the animations and to the animation montages that we set up, we're going to go here and then about here when my character's about to slash, under notice, we can go here and add, add notify state, sorry, add notify state and add the damage. So from here, it will turn on the damage collision. So all through here and then I'll have an end here. So I'll just move it here. So now when we get to this part of the animation, it will turn on the sword's collision and it'll be able to damage other actors. So we can just save that. And then the next part will be setting up a whole damage system so we can damage and kill the actor. So to do that, right click, event, any uh, damage. And we'll create a new variable called health and make this a float, whoops, click the wrong thing, compile. So whenever this character receives damage, we will minus it from the amount of damage we got. So I'm just going to make his health 15 and then we will set our health to be whatever the damage taken was minus our health and then if our health is um, less than or equal to zero depending on this we'll do a few things so if our health is not less than or equal to zero we will play an anim montage and just do a hit react because we're just reacting to be hit and if our health is less than or equal to zero then the player should die so we will do once and then play on the montage and then we're going to select the react death and then one second so if we do a delay and then about if we minus float by for, uh, minus it one second before the animation um, continues. So what we're going to do is drag in our mesh, and then we want to pause all his animation so he stops moving. We'll just click pause, and we'll drag in his character movement and disable movement so he cannot move anymore. One more step that we need to add is the ability to make it so that we can't be damaged by our own sword. So to do that, we need to event begin player and then we will get our child actor. And then from here, we will get the child actor inside here. And then we need to set the owner of it to be ourself. And this will just make it so that we can't um, damage ourselves with the sword because if we had back to the sword here we set it up so that we can't damage ourselves so we're just setting the owner to be the third person character so we can't damage ourselves so now if I just drag in the third person character and I go with my guy I sit he gets hit and reacts so he'll now have five metal health because my sword does 10 damage and if I do it again he'll die and we can see he dies and then one second before it pauses his animations because of the way we set up the system, it's really easy to add another sword. So say you wanted to add another sword which did more damage. What we do is go to our base sword, right click, create child blueprint class. I'll call this my sword 2. I can make this sword, say, do 2 damage. So under here, I'll make this sword, sorry, I'll make this sword do 20 damage, so it'll instantly kill our player. And I'll make this sword be the sword 2 which I did not select and you just want to move its collision so. and so that this sword is positioned correctly you would also want to go to your usual mannequin and make sure it looks correct when it's in the socket so I'm just going to add preview sword 2 ok so that's fine so now if I go to my third person character I can easily just change this to be sword 2 and this sword does 15 damage so if I use it it will instantly kill my player so we can just easily set up weapons and multiple weapons so that's all if you enjoyed like and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye